Palestine rebels with pebbles, the antics and antiquities, and Mr. Steez always got a chick up my sleeve. Bitch, please. Before Capital, Steez would team up with Joey Badass, and their video survival tactics would blow up online. Doomsday coming, start investing in a few guns. New gats, booby traps, and bazooka straps. Better play your cards right, no booster packs. Before Capital, Steez founded the rap collective Pro Era. Before Capital Steez became obsessed with the number 47. Before Capital Steez took his own life at the age of 19 on Christmas Eve 2012, two days after Pro Era dropped their first album. Before Pro Era dropped tracks King Stelio and 47 Pirates in tribute to their friend's passing. Now when Pro Era broke onto the scene, it was Joey Badass who was certainly the front man, but behind the group, the man who had put it together, well it was Capital Steez, and he was thought by many as the next one to blow up. Pro Era had been formed in the hallways of Edward R. Murrow High in Brooklyn, growing from the initial four members to being 20 members deep. But Capital Steez, born Jamal Dewar, well, he had actually formed his first rap group when he was only in the fourth grade. Now, Pro Era, they would go on to launch the national fame extremely quickly, and this caused a lot of distress for the young artist. He also became obsessed with spirituality, also some really weird stuff he had found on the internet. Hasmatic aura, I'm not the one to play with. Steve's been tight with the flow since the slave ships. The man had become disillusioned with the entertainment industry. The music game wasn't exactly what he had hoped for, and his artistry wasn't being perceived or portrayed or respected in the manner that he had hoped for. That's why he decided to take his own life on December 24, 2012 at the age of 19. My name is Michael McCrudden and welcome to Before They Were Dead, documenting the life and career of Capital Steez before his passing. And uh, you guys have requested this video, it's been a long time coming. I've done uh, Lil Snoop, I've done Speaker Knockers, I've done people like Eze. e Be sure to let me know in the comments down below who you want to hear about next, as well as leaving your condolences for the departed down below. Act like I never know enough. Thought it was a joke until the numbers started showing up. Capital Steez was born Cartney Everlyn Jamal Dewar Jr. on July 7th, 1993 in the back of a bus late at night in New York City, New York. His parents were newly landed immigrants to America from Jamaica and the family grew up in Flatbush, Brooklyn. His father passed away when he was only three and his mother and his three sisters, Tanya, Tamira, and Jamila, they raised him Christian. Young Jamal, his interest in talent and music, it was formed extremely young in the fourth grade, he created his own rap group known as the Saturday Morning Breakfast, and they would perform raps for their peers. Then in middle school, well, he was downloading instrumentals on LimeWire, and he would spend his time rapping in his attic. Initially, he was going under the name Blowtorch, but he would change this to Jay Steez. Jay, that stood for Jamal. As for Steez, well, that's a slang word for style. And uh, young capital Steez, well, he was a pretty heavy set boy, at one time weighing as much as 200 pounds. But he was a popular guy regarded for having a great smile and he was a bit of a local hero for his rhyming talent and for his mixtape The Yellow Tape. This was released before his junior year at Brooklyn Edward R. Murrow High. It was in the hallways of this school that the founding members of Pro Era would start to collaborate. It was Capital Steez, Joey Badass, CJ Fly, and Powers Pleasant. Now this school has a strong reputation in its music, drama, and media programs, and the school encourages the creativity and independence of its students through free periods known as optional time activities. That's when these boys would get together to freestyle. Your girl got a cake like every day is a birthday. Ooh. You're probably asking that how I know when the first place. She live in my crib like my crib is a birthday. Uh. The group had built for themselves quite a buzz not only in their high school but also in the local area and they would perform small shows. Capital Steez was riding on a bus back from one of these events with Powers Pleasant where he pitched to him the idea of forming a legitimate hip hop group. He even had a name in mind, Pro Era, which stood for Progressive Era, not for them kick ass hats. Now around this time, Steez was going through some personal trauma. He had given up on his Christian roots and would talk about how Jesus was really black. He would speak about his intent to become Rastafarian. Also, he was obsessed with a YouTube series known as Spirit Science. Chakras are energy points that run vertically from the top of your head down your spine. Depending on how you look at it, there are seven, eight, or 13 primary chakras. Johnny Shipes, the CEO of Cinematic Music Group, found video footage of Pro Era online, and initially, well, he only wanted to work with Joey Badass. But Joey stuck with his founding members and decided he would only work with Johnny Shipes if Pro Era was part of it. All of a sudden, Capital Steez, he had been enrolled in a community college, and he decided he would drop out because it was gonna distract him from making music. Now, with the boys teamed up with a proper manager, they were ready to make a name for themselves and reach a broader audience. 
That's when they drop their song and their video for Survival Tactics. Capital Steez's closing verse on this track was named by XXL as one of the 25 best closing lines in rap, as well as being listed as one of the best rap lines by Spin Magazine for 2012. And you'll be quick to catch a bullet like an interception. If your man's trying to disrespect it, send a message and it's over in a millisecond, nigga. Now this video signified a huge breakthrough for the boys. It was a big success. It got in over 100,000 views in under a week. But Capital Steez was a little off his rocker, and all of a sudden he kept talking about the number 47. He felt this number was the perfect expression of balance in the world, representing the tension between the fourth chakra, the heart, and the seventh, the brain. Now the young boy became mesmerized with the number 47. He would see it in everything and everywhere, on street signs, on Facebook, he couldn't get 47 out of his head. And this would cause for him some controversy with people asking if he was pro-Nazi. It sparked a whole bunch of, uh, well, uh, what do you call it? Conspiracy theorists. Those things. Yeah. Capital Steez released his first solo mixtape, American Corruption, on April 7th, 2012 with 14 tracks, but was later reloaded to include 21. Now this album wasn't getting very heavily promoted by Johnny Shipes. In fact, Johnny was really interested in Joey Badass and wasn't so interested in Capital Steez. Regardless, Pro Era ended up signing a deal with Cinematic Music Group under the name Joey Badass and Pro Era. Which basically was Capital Steez getting pushed to the back of the group he had founded, and this didn't sit well with him. Regardless, Capital Steez decided to go on tour with the group, and he had a wild time. He lost his virginity, he experimented with shrooms, and he started smoking weed regularly. But when he got back, he started posting some weird stuff to Facebook. He kept using the image of the Baphomet, a half goat idol. He also spoke with his friends about being disillusioned by the music industry, and he felt betrayed by Joey Badass's success. Pro Era dropped their first full album together, Peep the Apocalypse, on December 21st, 2012, with Steez featured on five of the tracks. But just two short Four days later, Capital Steez, he was found dead at the age of 19 in Manhattan's Flatiron District. He was given access to the building as an employee. He had been on the roof before where he would rap. In the early hours of December 24, 2012, he leapt to his death. Prior to that, he sent out a bunch of text messages telling those closest to him that he loved them. He also took to Twitter where he wrote, The End. It's worth noting that the number of the date in which he died, 12, 23, 12, well that adds up to 47. Now there's a little bit of people speculating there, what time did he die because he was pronounced dead in the early hours of Christmas Eve, but he may have jumped just minutes prior. And the rest of the story, well the rest of the story, it lives on in his work and his music. I've been trying not to get like, you know, too lost in my thoughts and everything, like, you know, cause it truly hurts, like, you know, like losing a brother or best friend. My name is Michael McCrad. Thanks for checking out Before They Were Dead. Please leave your condolences in the comments down below. Also, be sure to let me know who you want to hear about next. I'll see you guys in another video. Boom. No interruptions, stereos, pumping from the dungeon. Coming live from Flatbush Junction and making it hard to function.